Welcome back to my video series on the provider package. In the previous video we have seen how to refactor the Flutter counter application by using provider and change notifier for state management. And up to this point we have learned how to create values with provider and access them in the sendant widgets. But provider is a very generic library and you can use it not only for storing values but literally any kind of object in Dart. So in this tutorial we will turn the complexity level up a notch by building a slightly more interesting app, which lets the user choose and upload an avatar image to Firebase. And as we will see, in order to build this app we are going to need 4 different services, including authentication, an image picker, as well as Firebase storage and Cloud Firestore. And the goal of this tutorial is to see how we can use provider to connect things together. And to do this, we will start from a basic application that already has some widgets and services that I built in isolation, and we will see how to connect them using provider. Not only that, but the project structure that we are going to use is something that could support more complex applications. So really, the goal of this tutorial is to show you how to lay out the foundations for complex applications by using provider as an essential building block. By the way, this is a long tutorial made of multiple videos, where each video has a specific goal and learning objective. So in this video, we will start with an overview of the final application that we want to build, then I'll give you a tour of the initial setup that we will use as a starting point, and we will connect our first service to our widgets so that we can get a basic authentication flow working in the app. And in the next video, we will continue this tutorial by completing a working implementation for this entire app. And in the third video, we will go deeper and find an optimal implementation that we could use as we scale up to more complex applications. And in the process of doing all of this, we will learn a lot more about provider and how we can use it in more complex use cases. So if you're looking to build non-trivial applications, this tutorial will give you all the foundations that you need, in addition to a project structure that will support your code base as it grows. And while this tutorial uses some Firebase services on the backend, our main focus will be on provider and how it can be used in any kind of Flutter application as we deal with dependencies and values that change over time. And if you are new here, please like and subscribe for more Flutter videos. By the way, this is an intermediate to advanced level tutorial that assumes you are already familiar with streams and have some basic knowledge of Firebase authentication and Cloud Firestore. In any case, I will point out any resources that might help you get up to speed where needed. Okay, so let's get started with a tour of the example app that we are going to use. And when we first open the app, we are presented with a basic signing page that we can use to log in into the application. And once we are signed in, we are taken to a home page where we have an option to select an avatar. So if we press on this area, we can open the system gallery to choose a photo or alternatively take a picture if we are using a real device. And once we have chosen an image, this is uploaded to Firebase storage so that it can be synced across multiple devices for this user. And this step takes a few seconds and when it is complete, we get a download URL that we can save to Cloud Firestore. And this is what we use to get an image that we can show inside the avatar widget. And one thing that I want to point out is that this flow is user specific, meaning that each separate user can choose and upload a different avatar of their choice. So this application is designed to support multiple users and we will see that these are some interesting implications in the way that we structure our project. And once again, on the surface, this may seem like a simple application, but the foundations that we will build apply to more complex use cases. Okay, so we can now get started with this tutorial. And by the way, if you want to code along as we make progress, you can head over to the GitHub page for this project. And here you will find the source code for all the videos in this tutorial. And each video will have a corresponding branch that you can use as a starting point. So at this stage, you can copy the project URL from here. And then you can open a terminal in your machine. And here you can clone the repo. And then you can move to the project folder and then you can check out the initial setup branch, which is the starting point for this tutorial. And by the way, we will be using Firebase for this project. So if you want to run this on your machine, you also need to create and configure a Firebase instance that your Flutter app can talk to. And because you will be using the source code from this project, then you need to use the correct package name and bundle ID as explained over here. In any case, you can follow the instructions on this document to configure your Flutter project if you haven't done this before. 
And since we are talking about Firebase, I also want to point out that we will be using anonymous signing for this project. So you want to make sure that this is enabled over here. And you'll also want to create a Firestore database by following all the steps over here and also enable Firebase storage as well. And you can choose all the default options as you do this. And after all the setup is complete, you will be able to access the database, which will look empty in your case. And you will also be able to download the updated configuration files as explained over here. Okay, so let's get back to our project. And once you have downloaded the code and opened it in VS Code, you can open the terminal and you can make sure that you are on the initial setup branch. And if you are not here, you can just type git checkout initial dash setup because this is what we will use as the starting point for our demo. And once we have done this, we can run the application either on the iOS simulator or the Android emulator. And this might take a little while the first time around. So while this builds, I'm going to open the pubspec.yaml file. And here I can show you which dependencies I'm using. So we're going to be using provider, Firebase auth, Cloud Firestore, Firebase Storage, and the Image Picker. And since the build is still running, I'm going to pause the video and resume when the app has started. Okay, so the application is now running, and if we try to sign in anonymously, nothing seems to happen. So if you are coding along, you should be able to see the same screen as mine, with the same result. Okay, so before we start with any coding, let's take a look at what we already have in this project. And first of all, we can open the main.dart file, and as we can see, this is just a very simple file that creates a material app and uses this to show the signing page. So if we want, we can open this widget, which is located inside lib slash app slash the signing folder over here. And we can see that this is a very simple widget with just a button and a callback. And here we have a to do for the code that we need to implement. So our first goal is to find a way to authenticate a user when this button is pressed. And to do that, we are going to need an authentication service. Well, I have already prepared one for you. So if we head over to the services folder, we can open this Firebase auth service file. And this is just a simple wrapper for the Firebase auth class that we can use to sign in users into our app. So the main idea here is that we have a method to sign in anonymously, one method to sign out, and one stream that we can listen to if we want to know the authentication state of the user. So how can we call the methods of this service from inside our widgets? And the main idea here is to create a provider of type Firebase auth service that we can use in our app. And in general, service classes should be accessible to all widgets in our application. So what we are going to do is to open the main.dart file. And what we are going to do here is to wrap our material app with a new widget. And here we're going to use a provider of Firebase auth service. And we need to remember to import provider and Firebase auth service as well. And this provider takes the material app as its child. And it also has a builder argument, which is a closure with a build context, which we don't need. And we can use this to return a new Firebase auth service like this. And after we have done this, we can head back to the signing page and add the code that we need. So here we can type final auth equals provider dot of with Firebase auth service of context like this. And we need to import provider. And then we can type final user equals await auth dot sign in anonymously. And while we are here, we can also add a print with UID of user.uid like this. And just as a reminder, here we get a Firebase auth service with this call to provider.of. And this works because this widget now has an ancestor provider of type Firebase auth service. Okay, so after adding this code, we can hot reload and we can also open the console. And if we try to press this button, we can see that the UID of the user is printed to console. And this confirms that authentication is successful. However, it seems like nothing is happening on this screen. And that's because we are always showing the signing page regardless of the authentication state. So our next goal is to add a new widget class that we can use to show either the signing page or the home page, depending on the authentication state of the user. 
And by the way, I've already created an initial version of the home page that has some to-dos that we will take care of, but this is already something that we can show when the user is signed in. Okay, so over here, we are going to add a new file called auth underscore widget top dart. And inside it, we can create a stateless widget called auth widget. And we need to remember to import material dot dart. And then inside the build method, we can add a final auth service, which is provider dot of with Firebase auth service. And we need to import the required files. And to this, we pass a context and listen of false. And as I explained in the previous video, here we are using listen of false because we only want to get the old service, but we don't want the old widget to become a listener to this provider. Next, we can return a stream builder of type user, and we are using the on auth state changed stream from the old service as the input for this stream. And then inside the builder, we need to add some conditional code. So here we have if snapshot.connection state equals connection state dot active. And we can use this to check if the stream is active and has already received the first event. And inside it, we can type final user equals snapshot dot data to get the current user. And then we can use the conditional ternary operator and type return user not null question mark homepage and colon signing page. And we need to remember to import these two files as well. And this is what we use to decide if we should show the home page or the signing page. And finally, if the connection state is not active, we can just show a circular progress indicator inside the scaffold. And this is all we need to switch between the home page and the signing page. Finally, we can head back to the main file and here we can replace the signing page with auth widget like this. And we can import this file and delete this one. And if we save and hot reload now, we can see that we are already taken to the home page because we signed in earlier on. And after making all these changes, this is the resulting widget tree. And because this provider is an ancestor to all these widgets, then they all have access to it. Okay, so we are almost done with our authentication flow. And the last step is to add the functionality to sign out. And to do that, we can open the home page and here we can replace this to do with the code to sign out. So we are going to import the required files. And all we're doing here is getting the authentication service and use it to sign out. And now that everything is in place, we can hot reload our app and we see that we can easily sign in and sign out like this. And once again, this works by using a stream builder that listens to the on alt state change stream to decide which page to show. So this is how we can use provider as a way to give scoped access to the authentication service. Okay, so this completes the first part of this tutorial. And while I've already shown how to implement an authentication flow in some of my previous tutorials, I wanted to show this again with a special emphasis on provider. And also, this is the foundation for the next videos in this tutorial, where we will learn how to structure our application for more complex use cases. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so that you can improve your Flutter skills. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.